Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will talk about coronal mass ejection and the liquid metallic hydrogen model of the Sun. This was intended as a talk at the meeting of the Astronomical Society in Berlin, of Germany. And of course this model has been developed by Pierre-Marie Robitaille. Robitaille was a famous radiologist. He held the world record in medical imaging in 2000 and then he discovered that there is something wrong with the sunlight and he developed this model and of course there's a lot to say about how Planck's law and about Kirchhoff's law and how the sun does produce light and about the alternative how does this strange metallic state discovered in 1935 how does this work and uh, you can go to uh, Robbie Ty's uh, YouTube channel Sky Scholar and of course you can also read my book The Liquid Sun. I uh, think I have addressed all these questions in an accessible way now, uh, in an understandable way, but today I'm going to show you the most clear, undeniable and spectacular evidence for the liquid metallic hydrogen model and you just gotta watch that. Now we are watching this coronal mass ejection of 2011, a spectacular event. Material was uh, ejected and uh, for thousands, hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Now let's watch that also in slow motion. You see that it, it lasts for two or three hours. Now it's six o'clock in the morning, the material coming out for hundreds of thousands of kilometers at a speed of several hundred kilometers per second this material travels and you see it just lits up when it hits the surface here. This is the most important thing to note here. And well, of course, um, the first question is, what do we see here? But first I show you, it's even more crisp in the X-ray. This is uh, the same event in X-ray images. Let's start the video here and you see again, Look at the material and look at how it falls back and hits the surface and you see these little explosions occurring. So we must wonder what's going on here. And uh, okay, basically the standard model says that uh, the sun consists of a gas and that's it. Okay, and Robitaille says no, there must be another material this is condensed matter, this is a liquid, so for Robitaille there is a real surface, something you see here, and for the standard model this surface is illusionary. But if you follow the standard model and think about everything is a gas, so a gas has temperature and it has density and that's it. I mean, how do you imagine that? I mean, the obvious guess is that the ejected material is much hotter and denser than the surroundings, but how does a bubble of hot and uh, dense gas race through very thin other material of the same kind without being dissolved immediately. That's very, very strange. And then it comes back and smashes the surface. How does such, such a smash up between gas and gas produce light in the first place? This is the question the standard model cannot answer. And, uh, well, I show you the details, I take a closer look, and you see this, this material here, very, very uh, fragmented, these dark clouds, and what, what do these dark clouds consist of, okay? I mean, it cannot be that it is the same type of gas. It's just, just not reasonable. By the way, you can also make a back on the envelope calculation and uh, see, okay, this event uh, takes several hours and you multiply by the speed of sound and you immediately see that it would be no problem for a hot gas just to expand and dissolve into a non-visible nothing here. So the very fact that we see all these structures uh, contradicts the standard model. And uh, yeah, you, you see also the, this fragmentation here in the, in the pictures and this is something what's utterly impossible. A gas cannot fragment into smaller little pieces and in between there is all there is uh, there are still regions of uh, smaller density and then uh, high density region fragments into many pieces of high density. No, I mean the density would just expand if it's a gas. So all this means we have a real material, we have a real surface and this falls back uh, to the surface. And I'll show you another very good video. This was done by a mathematician, 
Miroslav Druckmiller and it's very impressive. You see something else here. Now look again at the same event. This is the same injection. You see all this very, very tiny fragmented material and how do you explain that with the gases? No way. But you see something else here and this is the magnetic field. And because solar physicists uh, like to explain everything what they do and understand with a magnetic field and undeniable there is, there are very strong magnetic fields on the surface of the sun, but you can see here they might be aligned with certain structures something like this, but this has nothing to do with the magnetic field because a magnetic field is, uh, well, you see the field line, but you don't see that entangled mess you see with the clouds here, okay? So this is another proof that the standard model is just uh, untenable. And it would be certainly interesting to analyze all this in a quantitative way and uh, amazingly few papers are uh, being published about this uh, spectacular event and others and yeah just look at the pictures i mean it, it's so obvious what else can you say that this cannot be a gas and, and you see it's not it's not related to these structures of the magnetic field it's something very different what, what you see here is condensed matter another material yeah i thought this would be of course of interest for uh, solar physics to discuss all that and i sent my contribution and it was listed for the meeting as a contributed talk but somehow um two weeks later uh it was uh, when the program was done it was uh, scheduled for uh, 17 something and i said okay they gave me almost 40 minutes because the session finishes here so fine but then i got the notice no 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 you got one minute to present a poster. Give me a break. So at this point I decided to make this video instead of this. I'm not going to the conference. And well, I mean, it's kind of obvious that people don't really like to discuss that alternative model because it's certainly challenging and threatening uh, to their business. And uh, a couple of years ago, I gave another talk at the meeting of the Astronomical Society and it was okay, it was discussed and I got also an email from one guy of this institute saying that, uh, dear Dr. Ernst, this is in German, I wanted to write you for a long time, I very much enjoyed your first book, which is Bankrupting Physics and however, I disagree with what you're saying about the sun for this or that reason. However, I would be pleased if you come to us um, giving a talk at our institute. And uh, well, I responded, oh, fine, uh, you should invite Robbie Tai, but I can do that, no problem. I didn't hear about uh, anything else from this institute. And But I think, well, since then, uh, somehow they don't like to talk about and uh, I think by not discussing the obvious and not, uh, not participating in legitimate scientific debate, the field is going to lose its integrity. And I think really that they just lack the courage to discuss that model of Robitaille, which is for me is obvious. And I, I think for every, for every person who believes in in her senses, it's also obvious. Just believe what you see and you're fine with the sun. In general, I think there is an increasing lack of courage in science, an increasing tendency to conformity to groupthink, and I have some idea how that originated, but this is a little bit tangential to science and I will make another video out of it. you see it in the links below. I have, uh, as I said, written a book about all this and this is also available in a German and French version and of course you can also go to Robbie Tai's website Skyscholar and uh, there is plenty of material if you're interested. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and if you're interested in fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.